Hi guys, here's another video. This time around it's going to be a little different. Instead of doing a study, I'm going to do a character redesign, kind of. This is kind of like imagination drawing with like training wheels, basically. Since it's a fan art of Final Fantasy Tactic characters, I'm just basically, the design and everything's there. All I'll have to do is just reinterpret it. So you're basically using all the same design elements, trying to stick with the same kind of color palette, and yeah, just doing it in my own way. Just want to go off the bat, I really like the designs they did in the Final Fantasy Tactics. The artists, whoever did it, they're really awesome. So I'm not looking to improve upon it. Right now, just getting the sketch, the pose that I'll be using trying to get the proportions right before I start adding on armor. Whenever I seem to do straight clothing, it usually it messes my proportions up quite a bit. So I always nowadays start with the anatomy first. If I'm doing like imagination stuff. If it's just a study or something, I'll go straight to the clothing. This is kind of the pose I was thinking of before I started. Sometimes Instead of just starting straight away, if you just think about it for a few minutes beforehand and kind of have as clear an idea in your head as possible, it really speeds it up. I always seem to have the same kind of issues when I'm doing the rough sketch zoomed out. I always make the arms too long and I make the head too big and too high. This won't be like perfect, like human anatomy really. This is just like the proportions I seem to be liking at the moment. So it's not particularly realistic. Trying to get kind of the same hairstyle. I really need to do more characters and stuff. If this goes well, I might do more. But just the editing and stuff of this is taking a lot longer than I would have liked. I'm trying to get a kind of face. I'll come back to the face. There's a lot of like weird issues with it. But I'll come back to it when when I start painting or something like that. That's a fine for a placeholder. If you're having trouble with a pose or something like that, it's good to practice gestures. Gestures will really help you be able to bust out a pose fairly quickly without having to worry too much. It'll, it'll come a lot easier if you're studying gestures a lot. I try to do about an hour a day of gesture work. Some days I feel it really helps, some days I don't.
Always, yeah. Always also tend to make the legs too long. I don't know why I gave her high heels. I think I wanted to just make the legs look longer or something. Or maybe I'm just too used to a lot of woman characters always having high heels. You know, I complain about it all the time when I have a chance to do whatever I want. I still give them high heels. Ah, uh, terrible. It's making an horizon line. Trying to make it look like it's actually standing on the ground. The color in the background, I wanted it just to be warm. Since the character I'm working off, it's a very warm color palette. And if you ever played the game, it's got a very saturated, warm, innocent kind of feel. Like very fantasy, a, a wonder kind of feel to everything about the game. Like wonder and adventure. I think out of the Final Fantasy games, in terms of color palette and character design, I really enjoy number nine. I found it had the best art style. And that's really where I try to take a lot of cues from. I know in the past my work has been very dark or whatever. And like desat, well not desaturated, but very dark. So I'm trying to improve upon that and go more towards what I enjoy which is basically a very warm soft saturated kind of feel I'd like my work to have a very adventure, fantasy feel to it. So yeah, that's something I am trying to improve, improve upon. Yeah, I'm just fixing the proportions. I had a bit of trouble with that arm. It just didn't look right. So here's where I start. I think, okay, I'm still fixing the proportions, but pretty soon, since I desatch, uh, I lowered the opacity, I'm going to be adding the uh, clothing and armor. All right, here, yeah, I'm just trying to get the front of it to just help me picture this as a 3D form. Here I'm drawing the, the corset bit in the middle. Doing some fan art for Final Fantasy is always something I wanted to get around to. But it's sometimes hard getting around to things when you're doing client work. And that is kind of an excuse and at the same time not. It's like 50-50. Like there is, it is really hard to find time to do stuff. But 
then you find time to do other things. I was quite happy with how the sketch was turning out, I must say. So the sketch phase took about, I think, an hour and a bit to get the sketch finished, something like that. It might have gone a little faster if I wasn't watching anime while I was doing this. I really feel the design that the artist did for the actual Final Fantasy Tactics is really great. I don't really feel that I'm going to improve upon it in any way. And I don't feel making something realistic or kind of realistic is improving at all. But this is really all I... This is the only thing that came to mind when I wanted to when I wanted to do a fan art for the characters. There are a lot a lot of the other Final Fantasies, it's either already quite realistic or there have been a lot of fan art for those games. So I chose the tactics characters because it's the only one that I could really do something with. That hasn't been done tons already or wasn't too realistic to begin with and i really enjoy the the designs so this is kind of imagination work like i said before this is imagination work with training wheels because the ca the color palettes and design is all there already and basically you're just reinterpreting it which is quite fun and uh, maybe a nice way to start out when you're starting off. The purpose of this was more to have a, a video that wasn't a study, but still kind of had the little training wheels on. Just another way to demonstrate something else you guys can do or try out. It's a lot of fun. And it takes away the initial pressure of having to come up with a design. That's one of the hardest aspects, I feel. I think the video was times six, so like six times the speed, I think.
so there's the sketch now I'm using the lasso tool to get the silhouette probably would have been a bit faster using the pen tool but I'm so used to the lasso tool that I just use that it doesn't really matter like either way it's still fast the lasso or the pen I was quite enjoying doing this character there's quite a few I want to do but the problem is these will be too long because now this was about I don't know four hours or something four and a half hours something like that and to finish this it was gonna take like another at least five at four or five hours so the thing with the studies is it's just oh, two hours or three hours or four hours or something like that and then it's done but this is going to 10 hours so it makes it a bit harder to do videos of like do constant like 10 hour videos because the editing's the editing is longer as well as the painting but I'll do this one and when I get some more free time in a bit I'll either I'll start doing the full illustration ones that I've already recorded it I'll start editing those or I'll do more of these but I should probably get to the editing of the other ones because they're starting to get a bit dated so I should get them out as soon as possible so yeah maybe we'll see I'm not sure yet but we'll see once you get the selection then basically I'll start just getting the initial colors down and from there then you start working in where the lighting will be and then after that then you you do the rendering I think I kind of messed it up a bit I started rendering a bit too soon and I'll have to fix the lighting in the next video but as for now like it'll just be a bit of rendering for this video the next one will be out in a few days when I manage to get around to it I haven't recorded it yet so yeah Ah, oh, there was a bit of a time lapse. I forgot to. I went away to the to the bathroom or something, and I forgot to. When I got back, I forgot to turn on the recording. I turn it off whenever I go get food or something like that. Sometimes I paint for like five hours straight or something like that. Sometimes I take a lot of breaks. It depends. It depends what's happening around me or what time of the day it is. How I'm feeling. If it's very noisy, something like that. It always depends. If it's really hot, I'll take a lot of breaks. But yeah, so I lost a bit of work there, but not anything crazy, and it was just blocking in anyway, so nothing insane. I think the sketch phase was very happy, and then here's where I started to like balls it up a bit. I wanted the face to be in shadow, but as I kept on painting on it, um, painting, I kept making it darker and darker and I made her skin quite dark which wasn't really my intention because I wanted it to be more European in culture which I didn't really pull off I'm kind of bad with faces and stuff I need to do more imagination work followed by more studies with getting better at art and stuff there's a lot of maintenance work you have to do like for example in the beginning you kind of added everything so then you do studies of everything you do studies of hands feet faces you do anatomy you do gestures you do color studies you do environment studies perspective you study little bits of everything and that's great because you're building everything slowly so you're slowly getting better at everything and everything helps everything else everything intertwines and as you're slowly learning everything your overall 
skill is getting higher. But when it starts getting to the point where you're getting a lot of work and stuff like that, especially if your job's very limiting or you're doing you're doing like just monsters the whole time and you don't carry on with studies on the side, your anatomy will start getting quite bad. And then you'll need to revisit that. And then if you're doing like gestures all the time because you have a limited amount of time, so now you can't do a little bit of everything, what will happen is you kind of have to like seesaw. So you'll start with gestures and then you'll get to where you were at and then you notice that you can't draw hands as well anymore. So then you start doing hand gestures and you'd realize that your feet get bad and then you start doing feet and then you realize your faces get bad and like everything as things go up and time goes time goes on other things are going down so you you kind of have to keep topping up everything so it's good to do studies frequently and then change the subject every few days at the same time you don't want to for example do faces on monday then tuesday do gestures and then wednesday do scenery and stuff like that because that way you don't gain any traction either it's good to do little clumps but you don't want the clumps to be too long as so you never get around to certain subjects so for me i usually try to do faces or like gestures or hands or anything like that you do them in groups of three so for three days or up to five days you can do faces and then after th that time has passed then you do gestures and then you do hands and then you do feet and then you do clothing and then you do scenery and so on and so forth that way you're getting a bit of traction but you're not studying something too long and leaving everything else out what I mean by traction is if you study faces say on Monday and then on Tuesday you would have learned a few little things that you did on Monday a few mistakes or something like that or the brushes you would have just got familiar with them because you just did a study and then you continue that on Tuesday and then you learn a little bit more that way you're really solidifying in your mind what you're learning and then when you switch to the next study so it just it gives you more time to to take more in you're spacing your learning for a few days so you're accumulating more knowledge rather than doing faces and then you wait a month or something and then you do another face you're basically relearning what brushes you use you'll have in the back of your mind what you use but you're especially if you leave it long enough you are basically starting from square one again i hope this will make sense so here yeah, i think i finally blocked in everything now i start to try add a bit of lighting I wanted harsh light from the top left and I was trying to add that in and add some, some hue variation to the pants. I think I, I worked on the pants quite a bit. I was trying to get it down. I was having a lot of trouble with it. I don't think I've really studied that kind of clothing material, which is what I think it's kind of like a, I'm not actually sure what the pants is. It's like a leathery, like a thick leather or something. Yeah, I had tons of trouble with it, and I wasn't too sure on the brushes. So yeah, you see, move to the face. I should have stayed in this step a bit longer and fixed all the colors and made sure that the lighting was strong and everything was working. But I start going into adding too many darks and uh, rendering stuff that I wouldn't need to uh, render at this point. And from, from the get-go, I didn't want these to be too rendered anyway. But I end up doing it, so yeah. At this point, I think I'm still happy with how it's going, the colors that I've placed and stuff. I think I start disliking it when I add too many darks in. But you, as you start doing paintings, you'll start to realize that there'll be points in the painting that you don't like it. But you just need to push through those points because 
it's like a seesaw. You'll like it, and then you won't like it, and then you'll like it, then you won't like it. It's mainly the perception. It's not finished, so you'll like it because of how it looks at the time. Everything's working, but it doesn't have all the darks or the values, or you can't really see the issues with the anatomy and stuff like that. So then when you start applying paint to the, those, things become more visible, and then you start disliking it. But then as you keep rendering, you'll fix those, hopefully, to the best of your ability, and then you'll like it again. And then when you finish it, you sh like when you finish it, you should be happy with it. Usually, if you're doing a personal piece, you're only it's only done when you're satisfied with everything. And then in a few days, you'll see all these issues, and <laughs> you'll not like it anymore. It's kind of the way it goes with all illustrations. See, so yeah, I'm still fixing the lighting, trying to do a little bit of rendering, take out the a sketch entirely. It's always good to make time for personal projects or little side things to to keep it fun and to make it feel that you're not stalling or sometimes just doing client work for long periods of time it kind of burns you out a little bit and I find it always revitalizes my enthusiasm when I do a personal piece even if you can't spend a lot of time it's always good to spend like maybe take every Sunday off or something like that I've had it where for a whole year I'd just be doing client work and then and then yeah you start getting fed up and painting starts taking longer and longer and longer it's actually more time efficient to just take a day off and paint something you like to paint and there will be client work that you'll like to paint initially you'll enjoy the idea or they'll be very relaxed in the beginning and let you do your sketches and they'll leave a lot of it to you but somewhere down the line it always seems to happen where they give you too many changes like too late in the image or they want something drastically changed or some things usually happen and it, it takes the fun out of the the image with a lot of jobs. No, it doesn't always happen, but with a lot of jobs, it gets to the point where, especially if you're painting on it for a very long time, it gets to the point where you just want to finish it. You want to get it done, you want to move on. But I feel with doing personal work, I never really get that feeling. If, if I ever do get that feeling, I just stop painting it. There's no pressure to keep painting something, but usually I don't get that feeling, so yeah and it's sometimes hard to take out time to do personal work since you're not getting paid for it or anything like that it's hard to take time out because you need you got bills to pay but I think it is worth it in the short term and long term because it will revitalize you and you usually work better and faster once you're like recharged Here I try to use a few texture brushes with the smudge tool, not the smudge tool, the mixer brush, trying to get the kind of leathery feel that I want, but it wasn't really working. Trying to make it uh, hide some of the brushes a little bit, some of the brush strokes, 
it wasn't really working. It was starting to make it muddy, and I was seeing that. So I changed my tact in a few seconds after I smudged everything. <laughs> yeah. Still trying to find the best technique for very odd clothing and stuff. Here I try use like a hairbrush to try and make um, like stitching texture, but that doesn't work. So I'm just going through brushes, trying to find a texture that looks right. I think this is the one I stick with, just to add a little bit of texture. I need to do more clothing studies. Just, it's just terrible looking at this. I should also fix the lighting. That's something I'll tack on the next video though, so yeah. Here's where I try to fix the folds. I should have got reference. This is terrible. A day before when I was working on client work I was using some reference for some normal pants and I was trying to remember the folds and the crotch area from that pants a few days ago and I was having a hard time soon I'll start working in the face and that's basically the end bit of the video. Well, not soon, but in the end bit of the video, I'll work predominantly on the face and talk. I know nothing about folds. It's just gibberish that I would make up. I understand the, the basics, like the fundamentals of the anchor points and how the certain material should fall and stuff. I've done the reading side of things, but just applying it is very difficult. It just comes with more studies and familiarity. So actually doing more work with more folds and clothing. So I think this more more or less looks like the design that I kept pretty much everything, I think. Obviously, a lot of the shapes are more exaggerated in the in in the the I don't know what style that is, but in that style, but it wouldn't have worked with mine. So I I, I dimmed things down. I still exaggerated in quite a bit. Like, you wouldn't see shoulder pads or anything like that that big in real life, usually.
just keep trying to fix them faults. I think here's where I start adding too many dark values and it's all muddy and I really need to fix it. Here I felt that the, the line in the middle was a bit too hard. It wouldn't be that sharp with clothing. So I'm trying to soften it out a bit, not make it so prominent. I'm trying to use a texture brush to make it not look so weird. So I'm adding some texture to the piece of metal with the paint on it. Uh, shoulder, no shoulder, the knee pads, something I didn't really have to do yet, but I still did it, and yeah, so here is this overall tightening, just trying to get it to the point where I don't need the line drawing anymore, but at the same time I'm adding way too many darks in the whole thing, seems always my big issue. It'll only be black black in deep crevices or where light can't hit it, can't bounce in it. Everywhere else, it's going to be a lot lighter. But I seem to just do big, thick, dark lines like a retard. It's a, it's a bad mistake that I keep doing. Yeah, just black everywhere. And then just adds more work because I'll have to go in and lighten it up and fix it. So, yes, for the plan of attack for the next videos, I'll probably keep doing studies after this. After this is finished, I'll keep doing studies until I find a bit more time to do to finish the editing for the illustrations. And then, once those are done, I might do more of these. But not every every video. I'll take a break. I'll do it like once every two weeks or something. And I'll supplement studies in the meantime and just talk like I'm doing now. I think that'll be quite fun doing more of these. Here's where I start working on the face. I have a bit of trouble with it. Only a little later on do I realize that the eyes are too high up and like the eyes plus the nose and the eyebrows are too high from the lips. So I'll move that down coming up. But for now I'm just rendering the face. I like to do the shading of the nose, the whole the entire lips, the eyes and the eyebrows. I like to do that all on a separate layer and then do the forms of the face on a, a layer below that. So it doesn't mess up any detail I did for the features and then when I'm happy with the two then I usually paint on top of that. I just find that's the fastest way. I do that in studies and find it's just the best way. At the moment I'm making the eyes a bit too big as well, the pupils. 
are a bit too big so it's kind of looking very cartoony which is not really what I wanted it's usually what I do in the beginning before I realize and start fixing it sometimes it gets to the point where you do the same mistake so much that you know it's like a part of your process to fix it because you've done it so much and here yeah here I'm adding too many docks again I'm gonna have to fix all this Also, the sword is too tilted. I have to straighten that out when I get to that in the next video. So yeah, yeah, here's uh, I love with the eyes. Helps a bit. I need to fix the lips, um, the mouth, the whole mouth area at the moment. Kind of, it's a weird. I wanted to do it just a natural like resting position, but I flattened it out a bit too much. It looks like she's pulling a funny face. I need to fix that later. So you can see it's starting to look kind of like a face now, not like a cartoon. Still just rendering. When I'm starting to refine the f features, it's where I start flipping a little bit more. Because you don't want to be refining the features of the face and you flip it and it's all skewed like eagle. If I don't flip an image at all, I tend to always skew everything a little to the right. Don't know why. I have trouble with balance and everything. Everything just skews to the right. So there's not much to say about the face. I'm just trying to fix the lighting and in a bit I'll try to make the hair look like hair. But yeah, not much to say. Throughout any of this face, I periodically lighten it up and then darken it and then lighten it up, then darken it. I think in the end, I darkened it a bit too much. But I'll, I'll fix that as I continue with it. I 
I'm not sure to what quality of finish these images are going to be. I've just given myself about 10 hours and trying to do the best I can. And see from there. Lately I've been doing a lot of hair studies, so I kind of had an idea of which brushes I would like to be using, but the problem was I wasn't too sure what I wanted the hair to be doing, and I wasn't, and maybe I was a bit too used to studies where they show you where the planes are and how the light is hitting them and, st and what value you should be using, so in this I had a bit of trouble just trying to do it. Now I do realize it's more orange in the stuff I'm working from, but I thought blonde would be a bit better, like blonde with an orange tinge. And as you can see, it still looks like a bowl on her head. I feel I was being a bit too stiff with the hair. I probably could have got a better result if I just wasn't scared. I was just working t on the the shapes I already had a bit too much. I needed to deviate from it more to make the hair look a bit more natural. Don't really have anything to say. It's just rendering right now. Trying to make sure that I remember the planes of the face, but also breaking the shapes. But yeah, as I said before, I'm sticking with the in like sticking into the lines a bit too much. And yeah, just wasting time at this point. Anyway, that's the end of part one. As I said before, part two will be up in a few days. 
thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you soon.